Hello folks. So I'm capturing the Tulip Nebula tonight, and this is my fourth session so far because, you know, with my, my big refractor, it's not that fast, and I, and I, I like to do 20-plus hour projects, so it's going to take me a while to finish it, but maybe, maybe tonight I can finally wrap it up if it stays clear all night. And I want to let you know what happened to me on my second session with this. It was a few nights ago. And I, I imaged all night. This this object is in view all night for me. And what happened is um, I, I set everything up to run. It played solved. It did the meridian flip while I was sleeping. Everything was good. And when the morning came around, I realized I had never checked a single sub. I mean, uh, that's a little bit overconfident. I don't recall ever doing that, not checking a single sub to see how the data looks. And when I checked in the morning, a water droplet was on my imaging camera sensor. And I thought, oh no. You know, um, a water droplet is usually the kiss of death if it appears on your imaging sensor because what tends to happen, this hasn't happened to me in about a year, by the way, but what happens is uh, the water droplet might actually move as the night goes on and leave a trail across your sensor. And whenever I see something like that occur, I, I take the camera off and I clean it off um, and I put the camera back on. But I, I forgot to check uh, the data. Can you believe it? I mean, who, who is that confident? But I, I dodged a bullet because what looks like happened um, is the water droplet appeared before I even started imaging, and it dried. So all that was left was just a stain on my sensor, and it didn't move. So all I had to do, and, and the narrow band data is more forgiving in this area, all I had to do was create new flats for this data, and um, I, I, I saved a night. It, it would have been a disaster if I had to throw away all of the data that night because um, it was a really good night to be imaging. So let me show you what I've got here. Okay, I am in Sequence Generator Pro, and let me show you something first, what happened to me last night. Um, it was clear all night, but while I was sleeping, my sequence ended at 3.30 a.m. when it should have gone to at least a quarter after 5 a.m. And what happened? I checked my surveillance. I could see that clouds rolled in for about 10 to 15 minutes and screwed up PhD2, so the um, Sequence Generator Pro couldn't um, start the next image, and it, the sequence just ended. But if I had had the recovery turned on, it would have tried to recover 10 minutes later. And it's in this, um, if, you did, if I went too fast, it's in uh, Tools, Options, um, Sequence Options, and right here, Attempt to Automatically Recover the Sequence, um, every 10 minutes uh, for 90 minutes. I've used that before and it does work. I don't know why that I had it unchecked. I must have been doing something before where I forgot to turn it back on, but it would have saved me. Um, I probably would have had an extra hour and a half of data had it been turned on. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that. And right now I am on the Tulip Nebula capturing oxygen. I've already captured seven hours of HA and seven hours of sulfur. And now I'm trying to do the same at least for oxygen. And let me show you that water droplet. Oh, oh by the way, I, I, let me show you here. I'm doing my customary um, gain 75, offset 15 for oxygen while I do gain 139.21 for HA and um, sulfur. And that's because I, I cut it in half for oxygen because oxygen seems to have a little less light um, pollution protection in it. And so by cutting it in half and keeping my exposure at four minutes like I do with HA and sulfur, it seems my mean readout comes to about the same, uh, very close to the same for all three filters. And um, oh, by the way, ooh, I just noticed this. Look at my data here. See this red line? This is the star count, and look how it just dropped. And look how my um, the focus is the blue line. It just the HFR went up a little bit. So either I've lost focus or some clouds just rolled in. So that's that's not cool. Um, let me see if it that if it shows up on the satellite here.
I'm right here. Yeah, you can see there's a strip of clouds coming in right there. See that? Right here. So, yeah, I think it's going to pass pretty soon. So, okay. So at least I know what's, what's going on there. And let me show you this water droplet I was talking about. There it is, that big scary thing right there. <laughs> Not cool, huh? Um, but it's, um, normally I would clean it, but right now I didn't clean it yet because I really want to capture this object edge to edge. And I'm worried if I take off the camera now in the middle of the project, um, uh, I'm going to have a, a uh-oh. Yeah, there are those clouds. Okay, I'm gonna, I'll be back and finish talking afterwards. Hey, so my imaging session is on hold right now until that little strip of clouds passes. I can even see it on my surveillance as well. But um, anyway, let me show you. I want to talk about that, show you that droplet. And here's um, an example of my sulfur data. It doesn't look quite as bad on the sulfur. This is one sub. And this is um, a flat frame. And you can see it here what if I uh, do an STF on the, the flat frame. <laughs> That's so uh, capturing the flats definitely did help. It, it, it showed up in the flats. And when I tried to stack some sulfur data from that one night where I didn't check any subs, I, I, um, I stacked the data and I can't even see it. It's actually up here. Let me rotate it. So it's a uh, so the, I think the, maybe we can barely even see a trace of it, but I think it might be there. I'll see when I put all the data together, but definitely recreating flats did help my data. So the, the problem is now is that I'll have um, one set of data for the original flats, and then I'll have a new set of data for the new flats. So I'll have to just um, process both, both sets and then um, integrate them after after I have all the calibration frames. So uh, it's not a big deal. I just have two different sets of data. I, I do that quite often anyway. Um, so yeah, and I, I didn't clean my sensor yet because um, I, I don't really, I, if I can get away with not cleaning it in the middle of a project, it's better for me because when I take the camera off and put it back on, I, I'm probably not going to have the rotation just right. And this is a project I want to really try and keep edge to edge. So that's why I'm, um, I'm leaving that dirty sensor for now. <laughs>